Hello, yogis. Welcome to our, let's see, we have today's Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. So this is class 18. I made an executive decision today and I am going to stop with the Tibetan rites. I wanted everyone to get a rhythm with the Tibetan rites, but yesterday's class, I showed you to really modify it down where when you, you have the days where you don't want to move really, but you know you have to move, like brushing your teeth, it's a habit. You can do this all on the chair and skip the first ride, which is the spinning. So if you're watching this as a random video, I highly encourage you to go back to class number one and then make, a, make your way all the way class number 18, because this is a community offering. Uh, of 20 classes if, as part of my 300 hour certification, which would put me at total of 500 hours. Plus I have some other training that goes with it too. So I am elated that I am able to share my practice with you. I wanna do a full on vinyasa practice today that I have really not done it. I've shown you a little bit of, um, poses here and there. Um, I am going to cue as much as it's doable, the modifications. But if I fail to show you modifications or mention them, as usual, it doesn't matter what I cue or what I do. It's important what your body wants you to do. So take your own modification. You have the liberty to do that in any yoga class. It will not make you stick out. After all, everybody is upside down anyway, and busy with their own poses. So even if you're in a studio and you can't do what the teacher is cueing and the teacher misses a modification or misses to mention it, do it yourself. Do you owe this to your body? So grab a cushion. Cushion is really important for the knees. And if you have blocks, two blocks, I have the camera now horizontally and I want you to be able to see me fully on the mat. Let's see. Yeah, I think it goes. Yeah, there you go. So a little bit more. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So sit on the cushion, sit on the, in, in your easy seat, however you want to. And then decide where the front of your mat is and put the blocks to the front of your mat. I will be doing this direction. And the cushion will be maybe on the one third on the back of your, so you can target the cushion with your knees if you need to. If you don't need a cushion and you know that already, great, you know, for the double dog, we may need it. Yes, all right, here we go. Hands to your, to your knees, close your eyes, long spine. Can we push the nose back? We know that from the Tibetan rites and make a double chin. Yes, we can. Now. Engage the bandhas here too. We're going all in this morning. Squeeze the pelvic floor, squeeze the belly in. You're still breathing, right? You're not holding the breath while I'm cueing all this. So start, continue your breathing. Don't start your breathing, continue your breathing. Big breath in. As you're holding the belly in, it's not easy. Big breath out. This is what I'm asking you most of the time when we are flowing, when we're in the poses. Holding the poses maybe for three breaths or so. Pull the belly in, pull the pelvic floor up. So those are the two major bandhas in our body, but there are more bandhas than that. The hand, the feet, the double chin, nose back. Yes, close your eyes, soften your gaze. If closing your eyes is not your thing. And breathe here. Squeeze the bandhas. Do not let go of the bandhas until I'll tell you. Squeeze the bandhas. Inhale. Exhale. It helps you really accentuate your torso up. Up towards the sky. Don't forget the nose. Push the nose back. Long torso. Long spine. Couple more breaths like this. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale and exhale and relax. Yeah. See how the torso comes down, everything comes down. You're relaxing the bandhas and everything comes down. So an inch up, an inch down with the torso. That's the idea. Now, I'm not gonna torture you with your yoga breath. 
the Ujjayi breath in through the nose and out through the nose. If you have that breath already, please use it the whole class. If that's not accessible to you or you don't feel like it today, we're most of the time mouth breathers anyway. So you can open up your mouth and breathe. Without further ado, push the blocks maybe a little bit to the side so you have the room. You can decide if you want to use the blocks or not. Come to your child's pose. So I'm going to actually use the cushion already on my knees to make it super comfy. You can have the knees together, knees upright. You make your own child's pose. Some of you already know this could be your half dog because your knees don't like to bend all the way back. Just because the teacher is telling you to come to child's pose, you don't have to do it. And then maybe grab one of the blocks and put your forehead down and gently massage your forehead going side to side. Are you still breathing? Yes, breathe. No bandhas here, just breathe. Just breathe, continue breathing, inhale and exhale. If you're here in the half dog, maybe stack two of these, bend your elbows, and maybe you're doing this already here. So make it your own. Feel the freedom to modify it to your own needs. Couple more breaths wherever you are. One more. Slowly come out of your child's pose into tabletop. Move your blocks forward so you have them there. And then let's move in a freestyle cat and cow just to bring a little bit more motion into your torso, into your hips, into your elbows, the wrist. Maybe you pass your wrist and do some circling here. Maybe you curl your toes under and they get a nice stretch here too. Then I don't cue the breath because I'm giving you options how to change this pose or modify it. Please continue to breathe. That doesn't mean I'm asking you to hold your breath. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. We are coming out of it by coming into downward dog. So you can grab the blocks and see if that, but spread your fingers as usual, or you can put the hands down onto the mat and come to your downward dog, lift the knees, and now move the hips by bending the knees. Press into your hands or into your blocks, whatever feels good here, and push yourself back. You're actually shrugging your shoulders here somewhat. This is probably the only way I would cue you shrug your shoulders. Can you engage the bandhas here in downward dog? Yes, you can. Squeeze the belly in at least. The belly needs to come in so your torso goes further back and it elongates here at the same time. One more big breath here. Every one of us, bend your knees towards your mat or towards your cushion. Don't land there. Exhale, hips up and back. Inhale, bend your knees. Exhale back. Inhale one last time. Exhale back. Perfect. Now, walking your hands back is easier than walking your feet forward towards your hands. Let's do both of them, but first let's do walking your hands back, 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 back. And I'm going to adjust here so you can see me and stay here with me in this forward fold. Bend your knees as much as needed. Squeeze the belly in, maybe grab your elbows here, make your torso a little bit heavier and maybe a little bit here from side to side. Shake your head gently, yes, and gently, no. One more breath, are you squeezing the belly in? Yes, you are, of course you are, you know about the bandhas. Now release your hands with an inhale, grab your shin bones, come to an L shape here, look forward, belly in, exhale, fold again. We are coming up, inhale, hands to your hips or arms out wide, long spine, bend your knees, bend your knees, bend your knees, and then straighten the knees, reach up towards the sky, I'm just turning, you stay on your mat. I know you can't see me. Reach up, reach up, reach up. I'm going so back so you can see me. And this was your big inhale and then exhale, hands through heart center. 
our mountain pose. This is our even standing pose. So you stay on the back of your mat. I'm here a little further away. I'm trying with this iPhone here to get me in the center so you can see me. Hands into heart center. Maybe we want to set an intention for this class. We're going to flow for this whole class. So strong legs, strong feet. Feel how you're pressing your feet down into the mat. Engage the bandhas here. Maybe bow down over your fingertips and set an intention for your class. Set an intention for yourself. Set an intention. Maybe you send some good wishes to a loved one. Anything goes. That's our sankalpa. Big breath in, big breath out. Join me for one OM. OM is the sound that's, that really attaches all of us to each other. The resonating sound of OM. Here we go. Take a big breath in. OM. Inhale and reach your arms up, 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 up. Exhale, fold forward. I'm coming to the back of our mats. That's where I left you off. Inhale, look forward. Lift the head. Exhale, target with your knees, your cushion. Come forward. Remember the double dog in the Tibetan right? I'm going to push this forward here. Separate your fingers. Come forward, come forward, come forward. Move your hips down. Remember the eyes of the elbows towards each other. Maybe the nose back. Exhale to your half dog or child's pose. Inhale, come again forward. We're going to do this three times. Turn the eyes of the elbows towards each other, nose up. Exhale, go back. Inhale, last time, come forward. Turn the eyes of the elbows towards each other, nose up. Exhale, go back to your half dog or, that, or your child's pose. We are coming up again. Inhale to downward dog. If you need to pedal it out, great. Some of you may be able to bring the heels down. Look back at your kneecaps. If your heels are up, bend your knees and push your heels further towards the floor. Look at your kneecaps. Belly in, really important, shrug your shoulders. One more breath here. Now, for those of you who liked walking back, walk back or walk with me forward towards your hands. Walk, walk, walk and fold with an exhale. Inhale, we're coming up. You can come up on the back of your mat however you like. Stretch your arms up overhead. I know you can't see me. Exhale, hands through heart center, Samas TT. I need to adjust you a little bit more. So let's do a proper sun salutation. You're on top of your mat or you're on the back, doesn't really matter. You can hit the cushion from both sides. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, keep the belly in, keep the belly in, bend your knees as much as you need it. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift the head, look forward, keep the belly in. Exhale, put your hands down, maybe knees down to your cushion or you're in your plank position, round your upper back. Inhale, move your shoulders past your wrist, wherever you are. Exhale, this is a little push-up position. You don't have to bend a lot. Bend the elbows straight back. Look forward, don't look back now. Inhale, straighten the arms, knees can come down or knees up. Turn the eyes of the elbows towards each other. Exhale, push back to child's pose, half dog or downward dog. Big breath in, big breath out. Look at your kneecaps, look back. Keep the belly in and downward dog. In child's pose and half dog, we know what to do. We've done many of these. Inhale deeply, exhale slowly. Do you feel your hands? Spread your fingers here. Shrug your shoulders. One more breath. Here is the next one. We're going again into 
the standing position, how either you walk your feet up to your hands, little baby steps up and with an exhale fold or you're already walking back towards your hands. Inhale, come all the way up, 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 your way of coming up. Exhale, hands through heart center. Here is your equal standing pose again. Let's do this one more time. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, belly in, fold. Front of the mat or back of the mat, doesn't matter. Inhale, just lift the head, look forward. Exhale, step back to your high plank. Step into your high plank from the back of your mat or bring the knees right away down. Now inhale, shoulders past your wrist. Exhale, chaturanga. This can be knees down, chaturanga too. Inhale, up dog. Turn the eyes of the elbows towards each other, nose up. Exhale, child's pose, half dog or downward dog. Big breath in, big breath out. Since we don't have the Tibetan rice, we need to warm up the body. All right, here we go. Bend your knees now in, um, in your downward dog. For those of you who are walking your hands back, don't bend the knees, just start walking back. For those of you who have a jumping forward or going a little bit faster, bend the knees and come a little bit faster to the front of your mat and fold with an exhale. For those of you who went back, fold with an exhale. Inhale all the way up, front or back of your mat. And exhale, hands through heart center. Here's your equal standing pose. All right, we're going into sun B. These were some A's to warm up. Sun B, you can have your feet together. You're at the front of your mat or at the back of your mat. Doesn't really matter. Here we go. Bend your knees. How much your knees will tell you. Feel your feet. The weight is in the back of your heel, in your heels. Squeeze the bandhas, bend as much as needed. You can have your hands in heart center or you can have your arms up. This is your chair, squeeze the pelvic floor, squeeze the belly in. Doesn't matter if you're in the front of your mat or in the back of your mat. One more breath here, squeeze the bandhas like you mean it. Exhale, fold. Inhale, just lift the head. Exhale, normal, the way you like it, onto your cushion, or you come right away to your high plank. Inhale, shoulders past your wrist, look forward. Exhale, take your push up, look forward, look forward. Inhale, knees down or knees up to up dog. Don't forget the eyes of the elbows, toward, turn them towards each other. Exhale, child's pose, half dog or downward dog. Perfect. Big breath in, big breath out. Inhale deeply, exhale slowly. I am going to show you the modification first for the warrior one that Sun B, the Sun Salutation B, has a warrior one on the right side and on the left side. So I'm going to show you first the modification. Let's all come down to the knees and you can do this here too. And it would be really nice if you incorporate your blocks, if you have your blocks, because it makes the floor come up a little closer to you. Take your right foot forward and fingertips on blocks and adjust here. We're coming to come all to four, warrior one. Now you once you've hit, push your back knee off the ground, put your back foot to 45 ish. You have the security, you have the security of the blocks to come up, or you don't need it. Inhale up, up, up. Bring your left ribs forward, forward. So it squares your hips forward. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, I'm gonna show you again the modification. Target your blocks or the floor. Bend the back knee, toes forward. Pick up your front foot, go back, and take your chaturanga with the blocks. It would be like this. Shoulders past your wrist. Inhale, up dog. Eyes of the elbows towards each other. Exhale, push your hips back to child's pose or half dog, or maybe with the blocks, downward dog. See if you like this. Well, if you're 
really slipping and sliding on your mat, you probably don't want the blocks here in downward dog, but give it a try. Big breath in, big breath out. If you like the way I brought you in with the knees down, do it, or do it on the left side. Otherwise, drop the back foot already, the right foot, that will be our back foot here, the right foot to 45, and step your right foot forward on blocks. This gives you a lot of space to step forward. And then with an inhale, come out of it, come out of it, up, 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 up. Bring the right ribs forward. Exhale, we're coming down. Hands to blocks, hands to the floor, knees on the cushion, or you coming directly into your high plank, round your upper body. Look forward, shoulders past your wrist with an inhale. Exhale, push up position. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, you choose downward dog, half dog, child's pose. Big breath in, big breath out. Inhale deeply, exhale slowly. Remember the downward dog, belly in, shrug your shoulders. That's it. One more. Either walk back or hop, step up forward, whatever you like, and fold. Come, walk your our hands up your legs, up your legs, or come as one piece up. Inhale up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Sit in your chair. Yes, the chair in Sun Salutation B. It's like two bookends. That's it. Hands in heart center or arms overhead. You decide how low your chair is. It can be a super low chair. It can be a little higher dining room chair. Or maybe you're on a bar stool here. Squeeze the bum. That's one more breath. And exhale, hands to heart center, your back or your front, doesn't matter. And guess what? You're gonna do the medical Qigong. You're used to that. Stay where you're at. I'm gonna change the direction here so you can see me. What am I doing here? Ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, arms, especially the arms are moving. We call this the medical Qigong. All right, let's get serious here. Push your cushion to the side and I'm gonna try to stay, let's see. I think I need to flip the camera now so you can see me better in the flow. So now we're warmed up and we can start our sequence. So I don't know how your orientation is, but we're gonna step right. So I'm stepping right, especially because you see me from the front. Look at the distance of your feet. They're parallel to each other, but we're gonna take the right foot and turn the toes out towards the short edge of your mat. We're coming into the triangle. This hip action is important here. What am I doing already? Belly in, pelvic floor engaged, push the hip up to the left, to the left. Here's my hand on top of my thigh. If you need a micro bend, bend the knee a little bit, not as warrior one, bend the knee a little bit, and then focus on opening up the top shoulder. Squeeze like the bandhas like you mean it. If you have more room, glide down if you like. You don't have to be super down to get the benefits of this pose. Now, remember the nose back. Yes, yes, if we, of course, double chin, arm up to high five, or maybe you wanna try it over your ear. Big breath in, big breath out. For some of you who are used to this pose, go into the full expression. You can have still the arm up to high five, or you can have it here. Big breath in, big breath out. With an inhale, slowly come out of this pose. Hands to your hips, parallel your feet again. Not a huge distance. Open up the left side. Hip to the right. Squeeze the quads, or maybe you have a micro bend in the knee to make it more comfortable. And then go down as far as you can go here. But now squeeze the bum, that's like you mean it. Open up the top shoulder. You know the setup from the other side. High five over your ear. Maybe you have a little bit more room to go. You go only to your distance. Your range of motion doesn't mean it's my range of motion. Big breath in big breath out. Or for those of you who are used to this triangle, have been practicing a long time, 
you know, the full expression, peace fingers to your big toe, big breath in, big breath out. One more, squeeze the belly here. And then with an inhale, come out of it, hands to your hips, pivot, parallel feet, and we'll do the reverse version of it, reverse triangle. Now, my back foot is it's perpendicular to my front. If it feels better in the hip socket, turn your toes more like warrior one, the 45 degrees, it's totally up to you. Now take your left ribs and put them forward. Here is a twist happening. The hips go one way and the hips, uh, the rib cage or the torso goes the other way. Again, micro bend in the front knee or you walk down your leg this way. This is already beautiful or maybe shin bone or maybe some of you are already on the floor. If you have the blocks nearby, you can always utilize the block on either side of the foot. If you put it more towards the pinky toe side, it takes a little bit more into this twisting. After all, the revolver triangle has a twist, big twist actually. Your right hand can come to your sacrum. If you have, again, the full expression, it will be, going up to a high five. And that takes you really into a big twist, especially if you follow your thumb. One more breath here. Squeeze the bandas. And then with an exhale, come out of it. Inhale or exhale, I'll leave it up to you. Parallel your feet again. Turn the left side out. The right ribs come forward, adjust your back foot. It can stay perpendicular, it can turn into 45. And then from here, you decide where you wanna stop. Keep the belly in, keep the pelvic floor engaged. You can do this, and this is beautiful, or you can go more into a twist by bringing your left hand to your sacrum. Your right hand can be on the shin bone. Squeeze the bandas. If you need a micro bend, of course you're gonna do a micro bend or you go to the full expression, your hand would be outside of your left pinky toe and you look up at your left thumb. Big breath in, big breath out. Squeeze the bandas one last time, inhale and exhale. Inhale brings you halfway up, maybe an exhale brings you completely up. You make it for your own. Parallel your feet, bring your feet a little bit closer together and then do your medical Qigong to get it out of the way here. The tension may have built because it's not a pose that you always do. It's the first pose really. Doesn't have to be this intense. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It depends on how you feel today. So we're stepping to the front of your mat. And if you wanna make it really something fun, jump that's it and you can continue your medical qigong here too all right step again right this is easy for everyone because i'm not bringing you up and down i will do that tomorrow where we go up and down up and down that's more challenging i thought i'd go easy on you widen your stance if you have the room in your groin area widen your stance a little bit because we're going into the warriors warrior two specifically. Turn your right toes towards the short edge of your mat, bend into the knee. Now, some of our warriors will be here and that's okay. Some of our warriors will be here. That's okay too. Think about your arm muscles here. If you think about them, you can engage them. Now turn your nose towards your chop chop hands, fingers all together, seriously. Activate everything. Look at you over your middle finger. Maybe you have even more room to bend into the front knee. That's it. Squeeze the pelvic floor. Squeeze the belly in. One more breath. Come with me into side angle. The legs stay the same, but you have a super active right arm here. The forearm comes to you lightly to your thigh and the left arm goes up to high five. That is great. Or maybe over your ear. That is great too. Whatever feels good. When you have, if you're practicing this regularly, you can probably open up the top shoulder by looking up, but that will put some of us into an imbalance just because we're shifting the gaze. So looking down is easier than looking up here. One more big breath. 
Inhale, come out of it. Here is the reverse warrior, if you like. Straighten the front knee and the right arm goes up. Look down, look up. And then with an exhale, come back to arm strong. Keep the, keep the uh, right knee straight. Heel toe your back foot, your left foot in. I shouldn't say back foot really. Pick up your right toes, make them now parallel to each other. Ha, this is your star form. Now open up your left, bend the left knee, adjust. You can go wider, you can go stay shorter and you're in your warrior too. We kept the arms straight out. It's, it's a workout here, keeping the arms like this. Big breath in, big breath out. Inhale deeply, exhale slowly. Are you squeezing the bandhas? Yes, you are. One more. Now I'm gonna show you a different way to get in and out of this. Inhale, straighten your knee. Let's do the reverse warrior first. Yes, reverse warrior. Exhale, come with your arms again to this star position. Now inhale, both arms up. Peel your left toes off the mat, pivot. And exhale, sit into your goddess. How? By turning your toes out slightly, heels in. And then don't chicken wing your shoulder blades like you're doing this. Push your hips down as much as you can and round your upper back. That's it. Big breath in, big breath out. Inhale, exhale. One more. Inhale brings you out of it, hands to your hips, heel to your feet in a little bit. Again, toes out, heels in, and sit into your camper squat. I'm putting my hands on top of my thighs. You can stay higher. You can go a little lower. Maybe some of you will go all the way to this yogi squat, squat and you have room to push your, you know, your arms against your knees and stay here. I know it's too much black and black here. I don't know if you can see me here. <laughs> big breath in, big breath out. If you're here, big breath in, big breath out. No, wherever you are, don't lose this. Target the floor, fingertips down, and then push your knees straight-ish. Exhale here. And then walk your hands up your legs, up your legs, up your legs, up your legs. Heel toe your feet in and then come into your medical Qigong movement. Yes, perfect. Good job. And you know what to do. Jump to the front of your mat or step to the front of your mat. So here, here, or here, and here. That's it. You got it. I'm just going to adjust the camera just a little bit more here. Awesome. Shake it out. Shake it up. All right. Now we deserve some balancing. Okay. Here we go. Let's start simply with the tree. So I'm going to leave my left foot down and open up my tree. You have the blocks. You can always use the block too. You can go here. You can go here. Squeeze the belly in. Squeeze the pelvic floor. That's non-negotiable in the tree. It gives you your stability. If you have a little a piece of furniture, if you need to hold on, that's totally fine. Big breath in, big breath out. Your arm position is totally up to you. Squeeze the bandhas like you mean it. Couple more breaths here. And if you fall out, you come back in. That's the spirit of a true yogi. One more. With an inhale, bring your arms down, bring the same leg forward, bend or straighten-ish. Squeeze the bandhas like you mean it. Five, four, three, two, one. Um, touch down. Shake it out in the medical Qigong. Move it from side to side. Perfect. Nice. All right, here we go. Other side. Right foot stays down. Remember, there's a foot bandha too. Press your toes against the floor and then find your tree. Tree, tree, tree on a block. Perfect. Anything goes. 
non-negotiables. Focus on squeezing your belly in, squeezing your pelvic floor. Hands can always stay in heart center. Hands can go up overhead. Wherever you are, the energy is here, right here. This is the main chakra here that keeps us stable, that gives us the energy. It's burning. Big breath in, big breath out. One more. Bring your hands down, hands to your hips. Bring the same leg forward. You can keep it bent. That's perfect. Squeeze the bandas or straighten. Five, four, you're breathing. I'm counting. Three, two, last one. Awesome. And then move your body. Move your arms in your medical Qigong so we get the friction, the tension, anything out of the body so we can move on. I think one of my favorite things is the walk of the phoenix. So I do, I follow a lot of different lineages and uh, I'm actually in love with Jiva Mukti yoga, but it can be very challenging to do the full on Jiva Mukti for everybody. And so I'm taking pieces from Jiva Mukti. So let's see if I can show you what I mean with that. And it felt, feel, uh, falls in line with the studio that I'm training with, with their, with MVP studio in Austin, Texas, with their Vini yoga, because they offer that on in their class. So take your right foot forward. Uh, let's see, let me do this sideways. Right foot forward on your heel. Perfect, uh, I'm sorry, on your toes, heel up. So see if you can bend, bend. Bend, my back foot is down completely, all 10 toes forward. Now see if you have the balance for both heels up. Bend, bend. If you don't have the balance, keep the back foot down. Now, bow, either way, it's perfect. Now the arms, so here we go. Inhale, arms up, come out of this bend. Exhale, bend as much as you can. Inhale up, exhale down, nice. Inhale up, exhale down. Two more. Inhale up, exhale down. One more. Inhale up, exhale down. And then step completely down and release your tension with your medical Qigong. You have heard me talking throughout my classes. This medical Qigong is something that I adopted from my yin yoga master, Pauli Zing, incredible man who is three times over Kung Fu uh, martial arts champion and who was the original founder of yin yoga, actually. Check him out. All right, so the other side. I'm turning this way so I can show you. I don't know why I can show you on the other side too. Hands to your hips, check it out. Left foot forward, heel up, bend and straighten. Bend and straighten. Good exercise for the ankle for the toes, for your knees. Anything hurts, you don't do this. I'm not staying for the rest of class. If you have the room and you can see maybe two feet apart the feet or less than that. Yeah, both. Or you keep the back leg down and you can bend the knee as much as you like. Now let's bring the arms in. Inhale up, straighten the knees. Exhale, bend. Inhale up, exhale, bend. Inhale up, exhale, bend. Two more times. Inhale up, exhale, bend. Last time, inhale up, exhale down and step down. Make it your own by going into your medical Qigong. Perfect. Now we're coming down to the floor poses. So um, actually I lied. Let's do one more thing. For those of you who love pyramid posture, I'm gonna give you options with your wrist. You don't have to do this. So before we go into the pyramid, I wanna show you. You can keep your hands right here. You can have your hands in a prayer position right here, or you have the room to flip your prayer position up towards your shoulder blades, flip it up. This is for your wrist mainly, but the other part are your legs. I'm gonna simply step my right foot back, three feet maybe between your feet, 
squeeze the bandhas. Now, when you're here, this becomes a serious balancing position. So I want you to be super careful. Feel your feet, engage your legs, feel your legs, and maybe come only uh, do a diagonal move here. Or maybe you can do a parallel. Squeeze the belly in, squeeze the pelvic floor. Or some of you may have the room to come all the way down. No hands becomes a balancing pose. Big breath in, big breath out. Inhale and exhale. Squeeze the belly, squeeze the pelvic floor. One more, look at your toes. And then with an inhale, slowly come out of it. Keep your hands if you can, step up and release the left back. All 10 toes forward, stabilize yourself first. Feet are down completely, legs are engaged, feet are engaged, belly is in, and you're coming maybe diagonal, maybe parallel, maybe you have a little bit more room to fold. So this is your pyramid posture. We're doing something for the shoulders, for the wrist if you're doing it with me, or any other way, it doesn't matter, your shoulders are involved, you're balancing here, and the hamstrings. Big breath in, big breath out. Of course, you're doing a, a gentle bend here in the knee if you need that. That goes without saying. One more breath, look at your toes, don't look back. And then with an inhale, slowly come out of it. Keep your hands, keep your hands, step up. Now release your hands, shake your wrist out. And at the same time, you can do your medical Qigong to get the tension out of it, out of any part of your body. All right, we're coming down. So now we have to maybe pull the cushion back into the, towards the back of your mat, wherever your uh, knees will land. And then you come maybe towards the front of your mat or you stay in the back of your mat. You know the deal now because you can make it work for yourself. So we're pressing down and there's this, we're coming down the yogi way, hands to your, low, your lower back, fingertips down, press your hips forward, forward, forward. As you're pulling the belly in, chest goes up. Here is your little back bending position. Stay with me here for two breaths, maybe nose up. If this doesn't feel right, get out of it. Inhale, exhale. One more inhale, exhale, start bending your knee in the front of your mat or in the back. Either step your hand forward or step your feet back to high plank. You can target the, the uh, cushion. You can stay with your knees off the mat or off the cushion, come into high plank, move your shoulders past your wrist. You can do the same thing with knees down and then take a push up if you like. You don't have to do this. This is optional. Inhale, up dog, turn your eyes of the elbows towards each other. Exhale, all of us, knees down, half dog, child's pose, whatever feels good here. Inhale, come back again. Now I surprised you. All right, I think stay here. I need to flip my camera again to horizontal so you have the full view. Okay, here we go. All right. You're back into tabletop. We're gonna do side plank. You can keep the knees down. We'll do, I'm gonna lift my right leg. You can keep the knee down, the left knee, and go into your side plank, reach up, look at your thumb. Or maybe you lift both legs off the ground. That's it. Big breath in, big breath out. Look up at your thumb, push the nose back. Nose back, look at your thumb, that's it. One more breath. Come down, both knees, chaturanga. Move your shoulders past your wrist, both knees down. Bend your elbows, perfect. And then release your hips down as you go into your up dog, nose up. Exhale, briefly one breath to your child's pose or to your half dog. And then come out of your half dog or your child's pose out. And we do the other side. So my left side will open up. I'm turning already my right foot, leaving the knee down. 
going into side plank, open up your left side. That's it. Or maybe lift both legs or the other leg too off the ground, scissor your feet, big breath in, big breath out, push your nose back and look at your thumb. One more breath, both hands down, last chaturanga, knees down, you choose knees down or knees up, push your shoulders past your wrist, bend your elbows, here is your up dog. Exhale, downward dog, or stay on the floor in child's pose or half dog. Wherever you are is perfect. If downward dog is a resting pose for you, that's great. If child's pose is a resting pose for you, that's awesome. If half dog is a resting pose for you, that's perfect too. One more breath, wherever you are. For those of you who are in child's pose or knees down in general, sit however you like. For those of you who are in downward dog, push the cushion aside, if you still have the cushion, and maybe you want to shorten your downward dog, maybe you want to experiment with a little fancy way of getting down. So get a little springy here, and then press into your hands, cross your ankles and sit down and release everything down and shake it out. Now I'm gonna take the phone down so we're on the same same level here. Perfect. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. And then come with me into your boat. Squeeze everything. Bandas, really important. Look, I'm supporting my boat here. That's great. Maybe you have room while you're squeezing the bandas, belly in, pelvic floor in. This is more a cow spine, chest towards your knees. Look at your toes. Maybe you have room to straighten your legs. Aha, uh -huh. oh yeah, yeah, if you don't have the room, maybe here, maybe you're already in a boat like this, wherever you are is perfect, make it your own, big breath in, big breath out, one more, we can do it, and then come out of your boat, release your hands back, and windshield wiper your knees from side to side, perfect. Let's come into a little bit more forward folding. So if you still need the cushion to sit on it, to tilt your pelvis forward, that's a great idea. Sit on the edge of your cushion so you have the room to, uh, to tilt your torso forward. I'm gonna leave the cushion to the side and show you a couple options. All right, maybe I should do it this way, that's it. I'm sorry guys, I didn't think this through black and the darker mat doesn't work really. All right, here we go. You can do the tree here too. You're gonna to do a forward fold with this. This is one option. You can do the tree, engage your quad muscle here, flex your ankle, flex this leg. The bottom leg is always flexed. So feel your quad, you can do it this way. If you have a half lotus in your, in your, um, arsenal of poses, push the heel into a half lotus and see if the knee likes it. Maybe the knee doesn't like it today. So wherever you are is perfect. Flex the ankle here. Now, this way, this way, or this way. Turn towards the straight leg and come down. Oh, you're feeling already your stretch? Maybe come to your fingertips and push your torso down. It's a cow spine, not a calf spine. Do not round the head down. There's so much pressure, unnecessary pressure on the neck. If you round the head down, it's not even funny. So keep it in line with the rest of your spine. The idea is to bring the heart center down, down towards the knee, wherever you are. Some of you will be, have been practicing will, or are more naturally open. Maybe you can grab the foot. Some of you can maybe make a fist the right side and do a bind here. Wherever you are is perfect. Look at your toes, unless your nose is completely down to your knee. Big breath in, big breath out. Are you feeling your bandhas? Squeeze, that's more important than anything else. One more breath here. And then let go of your hands slowly with an inhale, come out of it. Bend both knees, lean back and windshield wiper from side to side. Nice. 
we're going to the other side. Right leg or the other side for you. The bottom leg is always engaged. Flex your toes. You have the option of the tree pose. You have the option of the figure four. If your quads, if your leg is hurting here because this little bone is pushing, pushing into your uh, quad, into this big muscle, engage the muscle. Yeah, that's a little marker for you to engage the muscle, then it hurts less. Or you have a half lotus. See if the knee is comfortable with the lotus. Flex your ankle and then turn your torso a little bit more towards that straight leg and find your edge maybe here, maybe here, maybe here. It's not a cat spine, it's a cow spine. Maybe you're at the foot already or maybe you make a fist with the left hand now and do the other side. Big breath in, big breath out. Look at your toes, don't round the head down. It doesn't bring you closer to this pose. Inhale, exhale, one more. With an inhale, slowly come out of it, lean back, windshield wiper your knees from side to side. Perfect, nice. All right, here we go. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Twisting, bend both knees, focus on the left. The left bends right here in front of you. My left foot is sticking out here. You can pull the right back as much as you can. At the same time, you're engaging your bandhas. Look how much elongation happens when I engage the bandhas. I sit upright, and this is beautiful. Wrap the left arm around the right knee and start going towards your right twist. Or you have the room to cross it over and maybe take the left, wrap it around, or maybe bring the back of your arm to the outside of your right knee. You can do the yoga mudra here if you want. Let me show this from the side. And then maybe your palm is down or your fingertips. Press, if you have the fingertips down, press into your thumb and your index finger to open up the shoulder a little bit more. Turn your nose towards the right. Squeeze the bandhas. It helps you twisting here more. Twists are awesome. It's awesome movement for the organs inside of us. It's nothing tangible. We can't really see a lot of the stuff happening, but you know, the bandhas are a big portion of a yoga practice. Big breath in, big breath out. One more. With an inhale, release everything. And windshield wiper your knees from side to side. Awesome. And here is the other side. So start out again. Shake, shake, shake. And then the right bends right in front of you. Pull the left back or cross it over. You have option to wrap it or bring it to the outside. Yoga mudra is another option or chop, 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 chop hands is great too. Just activate your fingers here. Don't lose the, the, the effort really in the poses what makes the pose. And then the most important part is the bandha. Squeeze the pelvic floor, squeeze the belly in, turn your nose towards the left shoulder, big breath in, big breath out. Inhale deeply, exhale slowly. Inhale and exhale. Two more. One more. And then with an inhale, come out of it. Windshield wiper, perfect. We need a little bit of a counter pose here. We did forward folds and twisting. A good way to counter this all, especially after forward folds, is a reverse tabletop. So hands wherever you want. Feet are shoulder or hip distance. Press your hands into the mat. Lift, 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 lift up as far as you can. Maybe let go of the neck. Look back if you can, big breath in, big breath out. One more. And then slowly release your hips down. Release yourself all the way down onto the floor. Guess what? If you have the cushion laying around within the vicinity, pull it back for your head. It feels awesome because we're gonna do a, three bridges, three, three times. This is the best way to 
reset the spine really. So pull your heels in. Nothing is happening with my head. So head is out of the picture. My arms are by my side. Heels in as much as you can, maybe hip distance or shoulder distance if that fits, fits you better. But what I notice with me at least is my knees slay out a little bit. So what I do is I turn my toes slightly out, not a first position like in ballet. It's slightly out, just a slightly turn out, just gently. But I peel my toes off the mat because my heels have the strength really to push me up. Before I push myself up, engage the bandas, engage the bandas, both of them. And then push, 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 push up. Maybe hands, under, in, interlace your hands, palms together, that's it. Big breath in, big breath out. Focus on the breath. If your chin is super close to your chest, now your head is on a cushion, hopefully. That's okay. But if you have the room, maybe push your nose up like you have a tennis ball between your chin and your chest. But with the cushion, it, it is a little different feeling than complete, being completely on the floor with the head. It's the neck that we're concerned of. One more breath here. Come gently down, not completely. Come towards your hands or towards the floor and then push up again. That's it. Inhale. Exhale. Two more. One more breath. Last time, come slowly, 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 slowly down. Maybe touch your thumbs if you have your interlace your hands and then push up again. That's it. Inhale, exhale. Two more breaths. One more. Now release your hands if they were together and then release your torso down slowly. One more breath at a time. And then of course you pull your knees towards your chest, maybe start rowing them. This is a good way to bring motion into the hips and into the shoulder joints as well with no gravity. And of course you do it the other way around too. Perfect. And maybe a twisting position here push your hand, feet on the floor, take your right side over your left, like you're crossing your legs, you're sitting in a chair. Now your left foot, on, left foot is on the floor. Press into your left heel, up, hips up, push them towards the right. So you have a little bit more room to take both knees, legs towards the left. If this doesn't work for you, untangle your legs. Make, maybe you can stack them or crisscross, well, however you like. However you like is the best policy here because this can be an intense twist. Pull the belly in, maybe your left hand on the knee here, maybe your right shoulder is off the mat and that's okay. Maybe you can push it towards the mat. See what you can do. Maybe you can turn your nose towards your right thumb. One more breath. And slowly, 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 slowly come out back to center. Again, your left foot is on the floor, right? Press into your left heel, bring your hips back to center, undo your legs and shake everything out towards the sky. This is the best way to shake everything out because we have no gravity in the joints. It feels nice or it should feel nice. Again, it doesn't matter what IQ, it's you. It's your practice. And then left leg over your right. The right foot is on the floor. Press into your right heel and lift the hips. Push them towards the left. So both knees can go towards the right side. And maybe your left shoulder has room to be pushed towards the floor and turn your nose maybe towards your left thumb. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Big breath in. Big breath out. And then with an inhale, come back center, release your legs and do the same thing here with rowing. That's it. And then the other way, perfect. You can round your spine here. You know, happy baby is a good pose. If you don't like happy baby, release your legs up, hands between your 
legs, grab behind your kneecaps and rock a little bit. That's it. Perfect. Don't forget your breath. Now we're coming down. If there's any other pose you need to do before you come into Shavasana, finish your practice with that pose. For the rest of us who are ready to go into Shavasana, just lay there on your mat any way you like. If you have the blocks, a good way to support yourself with Shavasana is to bend your knees, put the, uh, the blocks underneath your thighs, adjust them, and then relax your legs out. And since we're doing this as a recording at, in our own homes, not in the studio, in the studio, when I separate my legs out wide, I hit usually a yogi. But here I can go as wide as I like with my arms and with my legs on the turn, so you can see. And so you can make this your own Shavasana. However, whatever that means to you, however you want to rest, it could be a meditation. It could be just simply like relaxing your muscles. It could be you're honing on, on the breath like my favorite mantra, so hum, so is the inhale, hum is the exhale. Relax your face muscles. They love to be engaged the whole time. Relax your forehead. Relax your body. Relax your tongue. Slowly come back to your breath, unless you want to stay here, which is wonderful. That means you are enjoying your Shavasana. When I say slowly come back to your breath, I mean your re regular breathing. The one that you don't even think about it. Move your fingers, move your toes, move your ankles, move your wrists. Maybe bend your knees one at a time to remove the blocks if you had them underneath your thighs. And windshield wiper your knees while you're going with your arms overhead. Maybe you grab both knees again, rock a little bit and turn to your left or to your right. Stay in this position. We have been down again on the mat for some time until you're ready to come out of this in a seated position and we'll meet on the mat seated however that is for you in whatever pose you feel you want to go there and I'm going to bring us all with hands into heart center. Let's revisit our sankalpa, the intention that we said. How do you feel about it now? At least let us give all thanks to our bodies that we were able, capable of moving for an hour. Let's finish this class with a group breath. I'm going to ask you to inhale for six. Hold it for four, pause it for four, and exhale it out for eight. So six inhale, four pause, eight counts, exhale. Here we go. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six. Hold your breath, two, three, four. Exhale, eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight.
Bring your thumb knuckles to your forehead center. If you like, repeat after me, the Kirtan style. Loka, Loka, Samasta, Samasta, Sukhino, Sukhino, Bhavantu, Bhavantu. May all living beings everywhere be happy and free. Ekonkar, we're all one. Namaste. Thank you. Class number 20 will have a vinyasa flow and a yoga.